What's up guys? So a while ago, I went ahead and converted an HPZ 400 workstation into my home NAS. Uh, so right now it has 24 terabytes of raw storage with around 10 terabytes of usable storage. Uh, we have around three and a half terabytes left of usable space uh, on this guy, but it has performed really, really well. Uh, and when I converted over the Z400 into the NAS, I went ahead and threw it in this case. I don't remember the specific name of this case, but it was like a $30 case on eBay. It's pretty flimsy uh, and not the best build quality. Even the uh, the hard drive bays, so they just clip in, which is nice. They are toolless, but at the same time, not the most uh, sturdy, uh, all plastic and stuff like that. So what I went ahead and did was purchase a Fractal Design R5. So this case has been around for probably like six years or so, but it's still probably the best case when it comes to a home NAS or home server. As you can see, you have all of these HDD slots. So eight slots that can be accessed from the inside of the case. And then you have a full like two drive access from the front of the case. Uh, this thing, super, super sturdy in terms of build quality. It even has some sort of insulation on all the panels. So I believe it should be like a soundproofing insulation just to keep a lot of the sound out. Uh, even on the top, if you don't need the airflow exhausting out the top of the case, that has that as well. And then around the front, this panel then opens, you have your dust filter, and then the access to the two drives up at the top. But the dust is one of the big reasons I'm trying to transition away from this original case, mainly because th this thing's covered in dust constantly. There's no filters whatsoever, besides just the front mesh on the case. So dust gets pulled in pretty much everywhere. This thing has the dust filter at the bottom, the removable one at the front. Comes with two 140 millimeter fans, one in the back and one in the front. I'm probably gonna put them both in the front and have them controlled off of one of the fan headers from this guy and then throw the 120 that comes with the HP motherboard into the back of the case because that's like a, a custom fan header and I'd rather just use the one that came with the HP. So what I'm gonna do is take all of the parts out of our original case, show you guys that process super quick with a time lapse and show you the process of installing it in the R5 and how it looks once it's set up. So let's get started. And that's the dust buildup we're talking about. Kind of gross. But that's why we're switching over to the R5. So we have that filter in place. And there we have it. Everything has been taken out of our existing case. So we have all our parts here. We have four six terabyte Iron Wolf drives, uh, two 240 gig SSDs for our FreeNAS uh, image. So we have dual image just in case one of the drives ever fails. And then these drives are configured in RAID Z2. So we have two backups uh, for parity just in case we can, we can lose any two drives and still keep all of our data. I then have a SAS uh, PCIe card so that we can add additional drives once we run out, which we already have of SATA ports on our motherboard. And then we do have a video card just so we can get video out as there's no video. Uh, there's no, no built in uh, GPU on our Xeon chip. And then we have our motherboard, of course. Uh, so let's go ahead, get our Define R5 set up so we can get all of this installed into there. 
So first things first, we're gonna get the motherboard standoffs installed. They do a really nice job with this case and labeling everything. So you can see if it's AM, that means it's used for micro ATX and ATX. If it's just an A, then it's used for ATX. And before we throw the motherboard in, I'm gonna take out our rear 140 millimeter fan. That way we can throw that in the front of the case. And now let's just make sure that our standoff screws line up with our motherboard. And we're going to use the original motherboard screws actually instead of the ones that come with the fractal case because they're not long enough. So the way the HP motherboard works is the motherboard sits on a tray and then that tray is screwed down into the standoffs. Uh, that tray provides us the ability to actually mount our uh, cooler. And so because of the extra thickness, the screws that come with the case don't reach the standoffs. So we're gonna use the motherboard screws from the original HP Z400, and that'll give us enough length to actually hit our standoffs. There we go, we got our motherboard installed. Uh, let's throw in our rear fan first, and then we'll throw in the uh, the SAS card as well as our uh, video card. Let's install our two SSDs. So now let's get our power supply installed into this case. So now it's finally time to get the hard drives installed. And here we have our hard drive caddies. As you can see, you have four screw holes on the bottom of your hard drive, and then it'll just slot right in just like that. And then you have a whole bunch of mounting spots in order to screw in the drive, just like this. And then what we're gonna end up doing is having um, some rubber grommets go into each one of those holes. That way the vibrations and everything like that are dampened down in the hard drive caddy. And the way I have these drives mounted, when they slide in, all of the connectors are actually gonna be in the back of the case. So it's nice and clean in the front. And then to pull them out, just pull in the clips and that's it. Now we're just gonna rinse and repeat for the next three drives and I'll show you guys when it is done. So there we go, the back of the case. It's a bit messy, but everything is in here and when we look at it from the front, it should look perfect. That's pretty much it. So all we have to do now is just put the back on uh, and start her up and hope she works. So let's try and power this guy on. There we go. Everything is starting up inside. Fans are moving. Yeah, let's just check our front fans, make sure all those are spinning, working beautifully. We actually have the front fans hooked up to the case itself. So there's actually a, a case switch up here uh, that I can push back and forth to control the speed. But I'm gonna leave it at its max. It's pretty quiet as is. We are of course booted and looking at our FreeNAS 
uh, UI. You can see our drives are staying nice and cool. 30 degrees, 31 degrees, 29 degrees. CPU temp right around 36, 37. So that is looking perfect. And even though this case is six years old at this point, it is still a fantastic case to do a build like this in. If you're looking to build a NAS or any type of server at your house, or you're just looking to build a PC with a lot of storage capabilities, then the Define R5 is a super great case. And it only costs around $125. And you're getting a lot of capacity and a really good build quality in terms of the case overall. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any comments about building a NAS or setting up free NAS or building in the Define R5, then definitely leave that in the comments below. And if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on my latest videos. There'll be plenty more cool projects like this one coming your way soon.